So our goal is to identify a lower bound for the time complexity of sorting in numbers. And maybe, or maybe, the, the, uh, maybe we can find a lower bound that says uh, every sorting algorithm is no faster than n log n. Uh, it's not at all obvious to see how we can develop that kind of lower bound yet. But there are some lower bounds that we can get quite easily. So for example, here's a fact. Every sorting algorithm is no faster than log n time. Okay, so here's, so here's, uh, here's the statement, you know, just abbreviated. Big omega of log n is a lower bound for the complexity of sorting. Right, every sorting algorithm is no faster than log n. So why why would this have to be true? And and I mean, first maybe it's worth asking: Is this true? Well, uh, log n is an incredibly fast. It represents an incredibly fast algorithm. And and the thing that log n kind of guarantees is that if you have a logarithmic uh, algorithm for an array for an array problem of some kind, like sorting, there's no way that your algorithm can be checking every element of the array. So think about what think about an array, right? Think about how many elements are in an, are in an array. Um, if you take an array and then you double its length, you double the number of elements. But if if you have a logarithmic algorithm for that for that uh, that processes that array, what that algorithm does if you double the length of the array is you only add a constant factor to the to the time it takes that algorithm to run. So for example, if the base of the logarithm is two, then you add one. To the, to the length of the, or to the runtime of the algorithm. And so this means that, that any logarithmic sorting algorithm would eventually have to, like for large enough arrays, would have to stop looking at all of the elements of the array. Uh, and so what happens if an algorithm doesn't look at every element of the array? Well, it might, it might, it might return an array that's not in order, right? The elements that it's not looking at could be deliberately put there to be out of order, which means that the algorithm could never sort all those numbers, right? So this is this is an incredibly uninformative lower bound. It's a it's an obvious lower bound because a logarithmic uh, you know a logarithmic algorithm act can't can't be looking at all the elements of the array, so it can't possibly sort them. But it's a but it is a, a lower bound. We can actually easily extend this to say that linear time is a lower bound for sorting, right? So so a second fact is that. Every sorting algorithm, and so we can we can just actually copy this this text exactly, right? Every sorting algorithm is no faster than is no faster than linear time. So I'm gonna erase this and just say it's no faster than big omega of n. Okay, why is that? Well, basically the same reason, right? A sorting algorithm has to consider every single input, every single element of the array. Um, at least, right? Maybe it has to do more, but at the very least, it has to look at everything in the array to be able to identify whether or not it's in the right place. Um, and if it's looking at everything in the array, then its complexity has to be at least linear, right? It has to be at least big omega of n, okay? So this is what's called, both of these, but, but this is the interesting one. The interesting one is the linear one. This is what's called a trivial lower bound. Uh, and a trivial lower bound is, is usually established just by looking at the size of the input. Um, if, if we're looking at, a, at, a, at some, kind of a, uh, some kind of an algorithm that is forced by the nature of the problem to look at every element of the input, then the trivial lower bound for algorithms that solve that problem is just the size of the input. Okay, So trivial lower bound uh, for these kinds of problems is the input size. Right. And sorting certainly falls into this category, uh, because for sorting you you clearly need to look need to at least look at every every element uh, of the of the input. So so look, let's take a look up here at our chart. So what do we have? Well now we have an argument that says you know certainly log n is is ruled out. Right? There's no way that there's a sorting algorithm in that in that class. Um, and then n is is possible. Right? N could be right. So this is our this represents our trivial lower bound. Okay, but, but notice that there's still some slack in here, right? There's, there's this big gap where we know we can go at least this fast. We know we can't go any faster than this. 
but there's this kind of sloppy area where we don't actually know where our fastest algorithms live for sorting. So you can think of this as like a loose area. And what we'd like to do is tighten it up. And in mathematical terms, what we're looking for is what's called a tight lower bound for the complexity of sorting. Okay, so let me, let me explain to you what a tight, what we mean kind of uh, formally by a tight lower bound. So we want a tight lower bound. So there's our definition. I've just paused and written the definition of a tight lower bound. So we say that some complexity class, big omega of f of n, uh, is a tight lower bound for some problem. If it is a lower bound, right, which means that every algorithm for that problem is in that complexity class. And then furthermore, if some algorithm is in big O of f of n. So let's think about why, why log and linear, uh, or at least why log is, no, is not a tight lower bound uh, for, for sorting. So we said logarithmic time is a lower bound for sorting. Right? So, so we know that every sorting algorithm, it's clear that every sorting algorithm has to perform uh, you know, at least log n steps. Um, and, and, uh, and this is true, right? Certainly has to perform at least. Um, but it, it, so that makes this a lower bound for sorting. Um, but it's not a tight lower bound because we can argue very simply that no sorting algorithm exists that is in big O of log n. So to be a tight lower bound, we need to say that every algorithm is in big omega, which, we, which is true. And also, there exists some algorithm in big O. So how does this relate to our chart? Well, up here in our chart, what we know is that merge sort, merge sort is in big O of n log n. So it, it is in big theta of n log n, but that means that it runs at least as fast as n log n, right? It runs exactly as fast as n log n, but that is, you know, we can, we can loosen this a bit and say it runs at least as fast as n log n. Um, we know that it is in big omega, right? We know that it's in big omega, of n log n, right? But that doesn't help us establish the fact that n log n is a, is a tight lower bound uh, for sorting because we don't yet know if n log n is a lower bound at all. The, the best known lower bound so far for us in this course is, is big, uh, big theta of n, right? So we know that every sorting algorithm has to run, can't run any faster than n but we don't actually yet have an algorithm that runs that fast. So we can't say that n is a, is a tight lower bound, and we can't say that, uh, we can't say that um, n log n is a lower bound at all yet. All right, so what we'd really like to do is we'd like to figure out if we can establish that, where are we here? If we can establish that n log n is a tight lower bound for sorting. Okay, so here's, here's the question. Do sorting algorithms exist, exist that are faster than, strictly faster than n log n? So the answer turns out to be no. And we have, to, we have to resort to some new kinds of arguments to show that the answer is no. So the answer, the answer is no. But, and, and, and proving that the answer is no is going to be the, kind of the focus of the rest of this, uh, the rest of this sequence of videos. Um, to do this, we need to, we need to start thinking kind of differently. So rather than focusing on an algorithm, we have to focus on properties that any algorithm would have to satisfy. And so that's what we'll do in the next, that's what we'll do in the next, uh, the next set of videos.